So in this video, we're going to talk about the MOS capacitor in depletion mode. Uh, depletion mode. And the reason we call it depletion mode is uh, that we are depleting uh, the carriers. But hopefully that will be uh, obvious by the end of this video. So if we redraw our MOS capacitor structure, uh, sort of this 3D kind of cube thing, we know it's got a metal, uh, an insulating oxide, so uh, metal, oxide, and a semiconductor. And as we've been doing, we're just going to assume that this semiconductor is p-type. Um, and we are applying a certain voltage uh, to the gate, and we're going to ground the, uh, the body or the bulk or the semiconductor, whatever. Pick your favorite term. Um, so MOS capacitor. And so physically, what do we mean when we say depletion mode? Well, uh, we know we've got a bunch of holes just floating around in the semiconductor. Um, but we also have things that I haven't been drawing and things that generally aren't drawn. And that's that we've got a bunch of negatively charged ions. So once these boron atoms, for example, give up their electrons, uh, they're now negatively charged and they're just sitting there, uh, rem just not moving. They're ensuring that we still have a uh, charge neutrality in the semiconductor. And so depletion mode is nothing but saying, okay, we're going to apply a voltage or we're going to set up some condition such that all the holes leave the interface with the semiconductor. So we're probably going to have some positive charges accumulating on the metal or some positive charges uh, sitting on the metal. And those positive charges are scaring away uh, all of the holes. So all the holes migrate into the, the bulk semiconductor and all we're left with near the edge is these negatively charged ions. So we've got these negatively charged ions. And this is depletion mode. This is depletion. This is saying that near the interface, so at the uh, near the interface between the oxide and the semiconductor, we've got no holes, or we've got very few holes relative to how many we used to have. They're all gone. They all disappeared. And so the question becomes, well, what voltage do we need to apply? Uh, what voltage do we need to apply? And you can guess what we're going to do next. Uh, we're going to take a look at the band diagram of the semiconductor. So what do we want it to look like? First, first of all, what does it look like in the bulk? So sort of far away from this, uh, from this interface. Um, well, we, uh, you probably are getting, oh, no, that's not the bit, that's the conduction band. Probably getting sick of seeing this by now and you will see it a hundred more times to come. Uh, but we've got our band diagram. And since this is a P-type semiconductor, the Fermi level is closer to the valence band. Let me just delete that. Uh, so the Fermi level is closer to the valence band, and this is a p-type semiconductor. So how do we deplete, uh, how do we get rid of the holes in this semiconductor? Well, we want to move, um, we want to bend these bands, uh, so we want to bend them such that the Fermi level has the same value as the intrinsic Fermi energy. In other words, uh, we're just trying to move this Fermi level so that it's close to EI, so that it looks like uh, we don't have any holes. So we want the band diagram at the very edge, uh, and ignore the fact that it should be slanted, I, I know, but this is just for illustration purposes. So at the edge, we want the Fermi level to be exactly the same, or very close to, the intrinsic Fermi level. And that, will, that means that this semiconductor is now intrinsic or that it looks intrinsic. It was p-type, but we applied a voltage such that the Fermi level is now right on top of the intrinsic Fermi level at the edge. So if this is the uh, oxide semiconductor interface and this is far away uh, into the bulk of the semiconductor, then this is what we want it to look like. So if we just erase these old, uh, this old band this is what we want things to look like. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to need to apply a voltage, but the question is, uh, what voltage? What voltage do we need to apply to the gate? 
Uh, well, in the last video, we saw that if we apply a voltage equal to phi ms, which is probably going to be negative, but maybe not, depends on the metal that you're using, depends on the semiconductor that we're using, uh, then we can undo the band bending of the intrinsic MOS structure. And after we do that, our MOS band diagram is going to look like this. We've got the Fermi level of the metal. Uh, we've got the conduction valence band of the oxide. Um, <clears throat> we've got the conduction band and the valence band of the semiconductor. And if you're wondering how I'm drawing these, um, I'm kind of just guessing because I know that this distance uh, is very large because uh, oxide has a very large band gap. And this is probably not drawn to scale. Like really, we should draw it like way, way down here because uh, it's like eight electron volts versus silicon's 1.12. But that's uh, sort of for, for illustrative purposes, this, is, this is, serves the point. Um, so, and we know we've got our, because this is a p-type semiconductor, we've got our Fermi level close to the valence band. And there's this, now there's this difference in the Fermi level between the metal and the silicon. And this is just equal to the voltage that we apply, or Q times the voltage that we apply if you want to, if you want to talk about the energy. And so what do we want to do now? Well, we want to drag this Fermi level, this EF, uh, we want to drag it up just a little bit more um, so that we get the intrinsic Fermi level bending down towards it. Um, and so if we do that, uh, and let me just redraw things on this side, uh, if we apply just a slightly higher voltage, uh, our EF will still be constant because it's still inside the semiconductor. Uh, our conduction band now will bend towards the, uh, the Fermi energy Similarly, the, the intrinsic Fermi energy will bend towards the Fermi energy. And our valence band will bend away from it. And the amount of voltage that we need to apply, uh, the amount of voltage we need to apply um, above or below phi ms is just equal to this distance here. So this is, uh, what, what do we call this? We call this phi fp. Um, and that's just convenient notation because phi fp is uh, kt over q times the natural log of the doping concentration ratio over the intrinsic concentration ratio. And it's just a nice quantity to look at. Like it's a difference between the intrinsic energy and the Fermi energy. It's nice and simple um, as far as these things go. And so we wanted to drag this whole thing up, all these bands up. Uh, so that means that we need to apply a negative voltage uh, to the semiconductor or a positive voltage to the gate. So if we apply this voltage uh, equal to phi ms plus phi fp, uh, then we will be in depletion. And that's great. Uh, and this is what the band diagram of the semiconductor should look like. Now, this is not exactly true. We're probably going to need to apply an even larger voltage. Uh, because if you remember, some of the voltage will be dropped across the oxide uh, and some will be dropped across the semiconductor. But the general idea is that we're trying to get just the right amount of band bending so that near this edge, the intrinsic Fermi energy uh, is equal to the Fermi level. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. Uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the videos and I'll see you next time. Thanks.